Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Parky Cueve. My name is Jonathan Healy, and this is the launch of One Cork. I wanted to start our journey here, in the home dressing room. The best days out of this dressing room are yet to come. Teams that will win Munster Championships and All-Irelands. I'm here, and you are watching tonight because of the love of our county, the love of our games. Cork GAA has a proud history, but it hasn't always been plain sailing. And the last few years haven't been where the county needs to be. So tonight, we stop looking over our shoulder. We start looking to the future because after all, we are one Cork. And how we do business is really about to change. Every member from the youngest to the oldest is set to benefit. And to tell us more, I'd like to hand over now to the chairperson of the Cork County Board, Tracy Kennedy. GAE of a card gale, agus fáil tí mór roif go parcí cíomh am ráinóna, ar ócáid speciálta agus staruil. Good evening, everyone, and you are very welcome to this evening's event, coming to you from Parcí Cíomh. In these strange times, we have had to find new ways to reach our community, and my thanks to everyone involved in making this event happen, especially Jonathan Healy of Healy Communications and our own commercial manager Sinead O'Keefe. On my election as Cork County Board chairperson almost three years ago. I told delegates at our county convention that we would never fully realise the potential of Cartier unless we went forward united. And while it has been a winding road, I believe that we have now found the vehicle to unite all who share the common goal of ensuring that Cartier is one of the most successful sporting bodies in this country. Cork is a huge county with a widespread diaspora, both within this country and worldwide. But until now, we have lacked the tools to harness those assets in a coherent manner for the good of Cork GA. Our GA community is a hugely committed one, with thousands of members across the county and beyond who give their all, whether as players, mentors, referees or club volunteers. But there are many others who would love to support Cork GA in a different way, perhaps through their expertise in a particular area, through their business experience or with their finances and we have long recognised that a structure was required to facilitate this. In recent years, Cork County Board set up a financial planning and advisory subcommittee, and we also welcomed the establishment of a formal supporters club, Cork de Carquay, while the Cork business community were represented on the Parky Keeve Stadium Board through directors John Mullins and Michael O'Flynn, all of which were major steps forward. But gradually we began to see that an overarching body was required to ensure a coherent, planned approach to the generation of revenue to support the operations of Cartier, including the stadium, while at the same time ensuring that our core values as a sporting body, with an emphasis on the success of our clubs and inter-county teams on the playing fields, remained at the heart of all our endeavours. To that end, the concept of One Cork was born. A body established by Cork County Board, amalgamating all of the existing organisations working to further Gaelic games across the county, including the Cork County Board, the Parky Keeve Stadium Board, Cork de Carquay, the clubs and the army of dedicated supporters of Cork GA. Our ambition is to deliver a unified strategy and implementation plan so that all facets of Cork GA are fully resourced in financial terms with commensurate guidance and direction in regards to how these resources are appropriately allocated. I am particularly pleased that the terms of reference include a commitment to the support of our women's games and look forward to the development of a truly unified approach to Gaelic games in Cork under the One Cork umbrella. While we are officially launching this new group this evening, a small army of committed volunteers involved with the various stakeholders and beyond has already begun its work and has been instrumental in securing several new sponsorships already this year. While work is also very advanced on the production of a new commercial strategy for Cork GA. Of course we recognise the difficulties of launching in the current climate, but we have to be prepared as an organisation for a post-Covid world and for the opportunities that will offer. This initiative also offers an opportunity to those people, particularly our diaspora, who are not in a position to get involved in the ground here in Cork, but who are true rebels at heart, to offer their support in a meaningful and tangible way. And the One Cork Supporters Club will be a key element of the new project. I would like to take this opportunity to acknowledge the work of all those who have been involved in and have supported Cor de Kirky over the last few years. And I look forward to working with you all going forward in the One Cork family. I must also acknowledge the energy and commitment of my colleagues in the One Cork group. 
Kevin O'Donovan, Ted Owens, Mark Sheehan, Tomás Mulcahy, Dermot Gowen, Michael O'Flynn, Conor McCarthy, Kieran Callanan, Sean O'Brien, Jim Wolfe and John Mullins, along with our commercial manager Sinead O'Keefe. Their expertise and excellence are indisputable and they are a truly inspiring group. We also have a clear governance structure which will see regular opportunities open up for new members of the Umbrella Group. And of course there will be many opportunities for those who wish to lend their expertise to the various project teams which will operate under that umbrella. Many hands make light work. While it is fair to say that there are many different aspects to our great association, and it now takes many talents and skills to run even the smallest club, never mind a county the size of Cork, at the end of the day, players and games are at the heart of our association. People sometimes ask me, do you have to go to all the games? To which my answer is always the same. The games are what the GA is all about. I enjoy administration, but it's very rare that you hear someone, even me, saying, oh wow, that was a great meeting, when is the next one? No, like everyone joining us this evening, I'm involved in the GA because of a love of the games, a love that was instilled in me from a very young age. 1984 is the first All-Ireland win I remember when John Fenton was something of a local hero in East Cork. 1990 was of course a truly magical year and I remember being brought to Cork by my uncle for the football, football homecoming and him singing the Banks and the Ball Christy Ring as we drove in the Lower Road. 99 will always be the standout one for me with three of my club mates involved and of course Mark Landers captaining the team, an honour beyond measure for a club like Killa which had only been promoted from the junior ranks in 1995. 2004 and 5 were brilliant for me as those campaigns were shared with a group of friends who have remained in my life right up to the present day and with whom I look forward to sharing future victories. 2010 was a hugely emotional one for me as my father had died just a few months previously and at the final whistle all the tension and emotion poured out as my mother and myself were in floods of tears in Croke Park. Tears of joy at the win but tears of sorrow that my father wasn't there to share it. Such is the emotion that hurling and football can inspire in us. And like every one of you, I want nothing more than to share such moments once more. One Cork, as I mentioned at the outset, realises a long-held ambition to drive Cork GA forward, as befits the largest county in Ireland. By embracing this vision of what Cork GA should be, every member of every club will be on a firmer footing for the future both in terms of finance and structures. From this point on, there is a single purpose, the success of the entire organisation, with a view to benefiting all our players and all our clubs and ensuring that the Rebel Red is once again a regular feature in Croke Park. I would like to thank those who have given so much of their time to putting this plan in place and I look forward to being part of the team that brings it to fruition. Ní nártaga chárlach héile is the Irish Seanachal that always comes to mind on occasions like this. But I want to conclude this evening with an African proverb that is a huge favourite of mine and incredibly appropriate for this occasion. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. I look forward to us all going far together as one Cork. Gorev Míle Magoiv. Tracy, thank you very much. One Cork amalgamates all of the existing organisations working to further the sport across the county, including the Cork County Board, Cardia Kirkie, the clubs and the army of dedicated supporters of Cork GAA. The ambition of One Cork is to make Cork GAA one of the most successful sporting organisations in the country, both on and off the pitch. By investing properly in clubs and county structures, One Cork will lay the groundwork for future success at every level, from Rebel Oak up to inter-county. The last few weeks have been tough. We've had mentors and coaches out with underage teams, socially distancing with non-contact training. It would have been easier to stop, but there's a reason why they didn't. What I like about hurling is the intensity of the game and playing with your friends and always going quick on the ball and learning new things and skills every day. 
football, I like the possession. It's a good way to be social with your friends and I like the intensity in it. It's a great way to meet up with my friends, especially during these times, and it's also a great way for me to keep up my fitness. I love watching the Cork senior team play because all the players are very inspirational and they play at such an elite level that um, all underage players would love to accomplish that feat. I love coming training because one day I want to play for Cork. Meeting with your friends, uh, coming training, getting fit and hopefully someday play with Cork. I really like training and it means a lot to me and I don't know what I'd do with it. We have to social distance but it's still fun because we get to chat with our friends. Uh, being on part of a team means that you develop certain skills to do the teamwork and you get to make great friends. I like co training because it gives me something to do instead of sitting at home all evening. I love the GA, it's everything to me. I love hurling because of the quickness of the game, the intensity and playing with my friends. I love getting out because I hate being at home stuck in laughing. We are one cork. We are one cork. We are one cork. One cork. One cork. One cork. We are one cork. We are one cork. We are one cork. One cork. We are one cork. One cork. We are one cork. Now, our thanks to the kids in Whitechurch GA and Rockbawn for their help in putting that video together. They, like all of our underage teams, are the future, the ones who we will be cheering on in county finals and searching for inter-county glory in years ahead. We have to do what we're doing for them and future generations as much as we do it for ourselves. One Cork is going to deepen the links between clubs and their communities. The goal is to ensure that every player from the five-year-olds starting out for the very first time to the inter-county star will see the benefits of this program over the next few years. It's already begun with things like Rebels Bounty, the revamped draw format that will see clubs directly benefit from improved ticket sales. So let's talk about One Cork with some of the people who are behind it. With me here in Parky Cueve, we've got businessman Michael O'Flynn, Ted Owens from Cardia Kirkie, and we've got Kevin O'Donovan who is the CEO of Cork County Board. Gentlemen, you're very welcome. Thank you so much for joining us here this evening. Michael, I'm going to begin with you. What prompted you and the other business people who are involved to get involved with One Cork? Well, the decision was quite easy because we're all about the GAA, people like us, we're steeped in the GAA. And um, when we were approached and asked, would we get involved? I was involved in the previous business board. I was more than happy to respond to the call because we love the GAA. And I think it's incumbent on people in business or not in business, but everyone to put their pit behind one cork and put their shoulder to the wheel when it comes to Cork GA. How easy was it when you were speaking to others to get involved? Because, I mean, it's a big ask. These are busy people who are running companies, who are making big decisions. To, to be brought in to do this, it's, it's, it's a bit of work. Well, it's been a lot more work than we, than we anticipated is the first thing I would say. The easiest thing in the world is to say no. And you well know, Jonathan, that people who say no tend to say no, and people who say yes tend to say yes. I would have to say that this, the whole Cork GA scene is really important to people in Cork. It's really important to the business life of Cork. It's important to people like me who come from a GA background and who have family now involved in, in GA. So I think that people look at the broader benefits that the GA bring and, you know, thankfully, the, the volunteerism in, in towards the GA is fantastic, and the GA is really based on on volunteers. And I've been involved over the years in in my own club. Besides, when I was playing, I got involved in management, got involved in in, in committees in the club. And when this question came, I just felt. If I get involved, will others get involved? And I was delighted to see that so many people got involved. So I, I think people encourage each other. Yeah. And I have to say that I was also in, you know, encouraged by those involved in, the, uh, in the, the chair and the CEO and the officers of Cock County Board because 
these are people who are really doing a good job and they need support. Well, and better to support than to talk from the, from the sidelines. Exactly. Hurling from the ditches is, is I, never a good thing. Um, I, I'm, not a, I'm not gone on hurlers. <laughs> when you got under the bonnet, I mean, and this is important because you, you did have to look at how things were being done. What did you find and were you happy with what you found when you became involved? Well, look, the, the, I, I like to be very direct when I, if I'm asked a question and give a direct answer. First of all, before I ever got here, I didn't, I didn't need to see what was under the bonnet in terms of what is here. I mean, we have a world-class stadium here that would compete with the best of stadiums that I've seen in Europe. I haven't been to stadiums beyond Europe, but all I know is that we have something very special here in Cork. And in terms, in Irish terms, it's, it has only one or two um, competing stadiums. I think we are really fortunate that we have a stadium like this. And what did I, I mean, obviously, no one needs to know, because it's well known already, that there are a lot of issues around creating a stadium that was upwards of 100 million in investment, something close to that. And clearly there are issues that needed to be resolved. And what I, what I found is that people had worked really hard to put it here and they were reaching out for people to help to maybe um, add to what's here and to look and see how can we, uh, as I suppose I'm here wearing a business cap, but I very much regard myself as a, as a AROG GA person. Um, and I think business are benefiting from it. The region is benefiting from it. And I think it helps all of Cork. So my, my view on that is that it's incumbent on people to help and to respond to the call when the call came. And it's not just about those of us who, who are on the, the board of One Cork. There, there, are, there are loads of opportunities, Jonathan, for people to be involved in different groups. And I have to say that the, the, um, the structure of One Cork is, I think it's unique. I think it has motivated people like me because of the others I'm working with. But I would hope it will motivate a lot of people out there to say, OK, what can we do? These people are trying. Can we help? Okay. There's loads of help. We're going to talk more about the, the what in a minute and what we're going to do. Uh, but I want to turn to you, if I can, Ted, because uh, Cardia Kirky, uh, you might talk us through the reason why Cardia Kirky was set up in the first place. And, and it came from the same good place that Michael is coming from. Solid, good, decent GAA people looking uh, to make sure that it was as good as it could be. Yeah, well, solid, good GAA people, passionate people, as we would have said, did not want as an excuse for Cork not winning all Ireland's, be it hurling, football, ladies, football, camogie, they did not want the excuse that Cork teams were not being properly financed. So initially, there was a group set up to help the footballers. It evolved and formed, Cork to was formally established then three years ago with the aim of ensuring that Cork were competitive and that we would get our annual visit to Crow Park, hurling and football. And that was the initial purpose, and it remains the purpose. And we looked at, you know, we broadened from team performance to look at facilities, the best of training facilities. We have a fabulous facility here, but in terms of training facilities, and we were also interested then in the future. And we thought that we should look and help support efforts that were already being made to improve underage coaching. So that was the raise on the touch first day, to ensure that Cork teams were competitive and nobody could say, ah, well, look what Dublin have, look what Tipperary hurlers have. We did not want that as an excuse in Cork. Okay. And we wanted to make sure the teams were resourced. So when you heard about one in Cork and you were approached about, first of all, saying that here was a group of business people in Cork who wanted to come in and, and bring a commercial expertise in to, to move it to a, new, a, a different level. What was the reaction given that, you know, your mission statement would have been very similar when uh, you came in? Well, we approached Michael O'Flynn with a view to supporting Carter Corky, which he had from the outset. So, Tomás Mulcahy and I would have met Michael with the view of putting together a group of wealthy people who would be prepared to support the teams on an annual basis. And in fairness to him, he said he would. And he said he would get others to be patrons, so to speak, of 
the Cork teams initially. But he came back to us some weeks later and he said, lads, the more I think of this, it doesn't make sense that year out there try to raise money, Parky Keeve has tried to raise money, the county board are trying to make money, there's duplication of effort, there's replication, people are being approached from different sources, and if people are going to put their money in, they want a, co a coherent plan, and we blame Michael O'Flynn. <laughs> you take the blame, don't you? You have no problem with that. You're yeah, I, I have absolutely no issue <laughs> With, say, with saying that, you know, and, and Ted has outlined it well, like there, there were too many different groupings, all well-intentioned, and one Cork is exactly what the name says. It's bringing everyone together. Okay. And in fairness, you have to understand that, you know, Crow Park has been fantastically supportive here in recent years, but Crow Park don't want a permanent involvement in Cork. And I, I have to commend the president, John Horne, and others for the help they gave us, but they were looking to us to see what have we planned here in Cork? And I think that plan evolved around them asking those hard questions because they sit on our board, meeting Ted, and we had a few interesting cups of coffee, and I liaising with, with Tracy and Kevin, who, who were very much up for how can we do something different. So I, I'm, I'm happy if I'm one of the catalysts, but there's a lot of people here who want this to work, and I, I'm delighted we've come together for the launch of One Cork. Kevin, if I can turn to you, I mean, John Horan was mentioned there. I mean, he, he's wished Cork GA very well and, and the best luck and encouraged everybody to get behind it. Uh, it is something that has real potential, doesn't it? Uh, because it's the first time that the structure will have looked at it in this way, a good, solid, joined up approach with outside support. Everybody's rowing in behind it. There really is potential here to, for this to be a game changer. For well, that's Cork. certainly what the county board feel and it's certainly what the Parky Keefe team feel as well. We see the massive resources in Cork in terms of people, in terms of the love of Gaelic games, in terms of their talent, their expertise, their relationships, their connections. And we were saying, how can we harness that and bring it inside the tent? Not everybody can become a county board officer. Not everybody can train a team at a given time in their lives. So this is another route for our brilliant supporters to come inside, drive change from inside, support us in our desire for change. So it's a massive opportunity for us. We're really grateful that such heavy hitters like Ted, Michael and many others are now backing it. And it gives us huge credibility then for us. Um, there is a dirty question, which is debt. Um, and, and it's an obvious one to ask at this point. Is this just going to be another way of paying off the debt uh, to the detriment of everybody else. And I know that the lads here are very keen to tell us that it's not, but answer the question. On debt, is this just going to be another way of servicing it and getting rid of it and, and, and not moving on in the way that people might want? Yeah, well, the, the vision we have for debt here is quite simply that the, that the outstanding debt will, that will remain in the stadium after we resolve the last few issue is the mortgage on the house. But we, what we've got to make sure is that the family doesn't starve while we're paying back the mortgage. So that's what this team allows us to do. And you needn't worry that when people are joining one cock, they ask that question. There has to be a clear answer to it. And our answer is we're going to be responsible. There's a debt in the stadium. We're proud of the stadium. It's, it's a relatively manageable debt over a long period. But in the immediate term, then we've got to protect our games, we've got to protect our teams, and you're not going to get the support of people such as these unless you have a strategic plan for the big issue, like the debt, but then that you have a vision that your games and teams thrive at the same time. Because the real solution to debt here is for Cork teams to be winning out in that field. Yeah, and what, the key solution is that our clubs grow and are successful. And what I've been saying uh, since we started this broadcast is that everyone's going to see the benefit of this. From, from that five-year-old going out for the first time, not knowing one end of a hurley from the other, to the inter-county star. I mean, is that the, the real goal here? Is Absolutely. that everybody sees that benefit? The players, the fans, the clubs. The, the vision here is the club, the school, the county. So under those three umbrellas, you've got everybody in this county, whether they're a supporter, a future player, a current player, or an ex-player. But what we feel, and it's actually my vision, and I share that with Tracy, our chairperson, is the idea that debt is becoming this toxic issue sitting over here, and everything else is separate. We've got to look at it as a combined unit. The mortgage must be paid. Croke Park have given us massive support, but no, the stadium is under day-to-day -day management of Cork people again. So we've got to be responsible, prudent, but then we've got to drive the day-to-day -day activity. And Michael, in there lies the real commercial opportunity. The building we are in has the capacity to be a massive generator 
of income. But it's not just that simple. I mean, we have to look at the entire structure of the organisation, don't we? And the potential there for bringing money in that heretofore hasn't been there. No, I, I think it was there in different bits. But like I, I come as a director of the stadium board um, with others who, who are on the board of one Cork. Then you have a Cork County board and, uh, and then obviously Carter Corky joining us was a big boost because it meant that all the pieces ha had come together. Uh, and when you join forces like that, you're much stronger. And like there is, there are a number of commercial opportunities that you know we can exploit here, so to speak. I mean, the pitch is something that I should mention. I mean, that was one of the big issues that came up not long after some of us joined the stadium board. And I think there was a, a great decision taken. And I, you know, it's great that I know um, Cork are now out of championships, but we had a good showing this year. But the, the pitch it's is incredible. there. It really is incredible tonight is, looking at it. I was out there earlier. The pitches are unbelievable. And everyone recognises that we haven't just got a fantastic building here, which I'll come back to your question in a moment, but we also have a fantastic pitch. And that's not going to change anytime soon because of the way the pitch was done. But to, to answer your direct question, like we have... In fairness to people who created the structure, uh, there, has, there has been an, a lot of learnings in recent years on events that happened here. Um, I mean, hundreds of thousands of people have come here since the stadium opened. And there have been a number of concerts here, and I've one of those who, who've come to those, and many others have as well. And like you just, you're proud of the fact that what you have here is, is something unique. But we see a situation here, and we have looked at what is here and what can what can change. Like we we are looking at creating a new entrance in from the Monaghan Road, some extra car parking, which we think is critical because of the entrance primarily used to be down the marina, but really this building um, as such faces the Monaghan Road. And we've, we've been involved in very constructive discussions with Cork City Council. Um, and the City Council, to be fair to them, you have to give them huge credit for, you know, for the marina park. I mean, the marina park uh, um, is going to be something very special for Cork. Uh, something that we have been lacking in Cork, our amenity areas like this. But we are situated here, uh, you know, you wouldn't, you couldn't create something like this now mm. to end up with a building like this in the middle of a park. And you have pedestrianisation from here all the way to passage. You know, you, you, people can park here and walk for miles and but miles. That, that's a potential as well. I mean, there's talk of a museum coming in here. This event space is going to be used more. There's a lot you can do. There's bits well, of sponsorship that you can sell. There really is a lot of potential. Well, if you were holding a conference, and I know we're, we're all in a world today where, where things are stopped, like, what nicer setting to hold a conference? And we are looking at making some slight adjustments to make this more conference friendly, to have a museum, to have a, a cafe downstairs. There's a, a walk that will be much used walk in time to come where people possibly will drop in for a coffee. They can go and look at the museum. You know, if we'll, we want to make Parky Keeve a, a place to visit in Cork that if you come to Cork to stay, that you must come down and see what's in Park Keep. in the same way that most of us would have gone and looked yeah. at, at the Croke Park yeah, it does, experience. It, just, we have great history in Cork. You just don't uh, go for matches or concerts or conferences. So you need to go for other things as well. Ted, if I can ask you, um, are, 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 are you happy with the direction of travel now? That the, the plan has been set out, and we know the figure, 20 million over five years. Are, are, are you happy and are the, the, the colleagues of yours in Cardia Corky confident now that this is the right path to be on? We're confident that this is the right path to be on. We weren't necessarily confident 12 months ago. And we've had 12 months of discussions, sometimes rather fractious maybe. But at the end of the day, we have to ask ourselves the question, what's best for Cork GA? And we believe, no, we still, and we're... We have terms of reference. One Cork will be a formally established group. It will be a subcommittee of Cork County Board, but it has got terms of reference. And those terms of, rec of reference continue to recognise the importance of team performance, facilities and coaching. The easy thing for us to do would have been to stay outside the tent. That was the easy thing. 
We could be, as somebody said to me one day, we could be the good guys raising money for the teams. But the reality of the situation is that if Cork County Board didn't survive and if Parky Keeve didn't survive, well then, you know, where are our teams in any case? Okay. And we were also given, you know, assurances that our base is still the supporters. Now, we will be using our expertise to help out in a whole variety of areas, like general sponsorship, like patrons, etc. Our main focus is still on trying to persuade the ordinary supporter that if they continue to support us, we will ensure within one Cork that the teams will never be forgotten. And as I said earlier, the excuse that they're lacking X, Y or Z can never be used for underperformance. Okay. I just want to finish up by asking the three of you the same question, if I can, which is, and I know there's people watching this right now uh, and who'll be watching it afterwards on YouTube, and they're going to be the, the, the weary Cork fan. And, and the weary Cork fan might say, sure, we've heard it before. What's going to be different this time? What's new? Kevin, I'm going to ask you for your response to that. What do you say to that, that weary fan? To me, what's unique about this is we have the people. You see the quality of the people we have and many more ready to join. Secondly, we have the plan. There's a commercial stra strategy in place that fits into an overall business plan and that complements the terms of reference and the vision for one cork as Ted outlined. Then we also have green shoots emerging already. We have sponsorship deals as you've seen over the past 12 months, the Examiner Partnership, Bond Secure Championship, Dairy Gold Championship, and many more deals now in the pipeline for major sponsorship deals that'll be announced in the new year. So the evidence is there, but we're at the start of the journey. We need more people to join, but I, I see the plan, I see the people, I see the green shoots. I think it's time for the train to leave the station. Ted, what do you say? Well, I'm not sure that we've heard all this before because this is new. And I'd have to give credit to the executive of Cork County Board and to the chief executive and the, chair, the current chairperson and the incoming chairperson who's also been involved in discussions. What they have decided is they have embraced the concept of people from the business world, people from the supporters coming on board, helping with revenue generation, but also having a say in revenue spend. And does not every board would agree to do that. No, we all realise at the end of the day, the board executive is the board executive and they have the final say. But for them to reach out to the likes of Michael O'Flynn, John Mullins, Kieran Callanan of Southwestern, Jim Wolfe of Dairy Gold, and the likes of Tomás Mulcahy, Conor McCarthy, Sean O'Brien of Carter Corky, and say, lads, we could do with your help. That, that's a new departure as far as I'm concerned and an exciting new departure because it recognises that the volunteer board officer, who is after all, with the exception of the chief executive, a volunteer, they don't necessarily have the expertise that Michael has in developments or in courts of law for that matter or whatever, right? Or, you know, the likes of John Mullins, passionate GA people who want to be going to the All-Ireland every year. So the very fact that this is now formalised and that it is as terms of reference and will be in place for 10 years and hopefully longer, I think it's a new departure. OK, uh, Michael Flynn, apparently it's all your fault, by the way. That's what I'm taking from this conversation. But what's different for you this time round? Well, uh, you know, Kevin mentioned it's all about people. But we have a complex here that's second to none. We have people who are totally committed. It's a question now of getting people motivated outside the group, and, and Ted has outlined the group that's there. I am very excited by the fact that the people we have, and I know there were many discussions, in fairness to Carter Corky, but the executive of the county board uh, you know, c came in behind this structure. When sometimes no change is the easy thing to do, and they agreed to this change. So I, th I think it's up to all of us to make one cock work. And I honestly believe that if we have a structure, we will have subgroups within the structure, and people out there, and I would urge people who might watch this or listen to this to, to actually say, yeah, we can help as well. Because, Jonathan, this only works if, if people embrace the, the cause. And like Cork is an amazing county. We have a fantastic city. We, we help enormously to the business side if we properly develop this. 
I think this is an opportunity and I think we're on our way with this launch and I commend everyone involved in okay. it. Michael, Ted, Kevin, thank you very much for outlining uh, what is ahead for us here and giving us the detail. Really do appreciate it. That is the One Cork vision. So that means it's over to you, the supporters, the fans, the, the people who bring their kids to training week in, week out, the people who go to the club matches. Everybody who loves Cork GAA has a role in One Cork. And the future is really, really bright. We know that from our minor teams. And I've been catching up with the minor managers to ask them how they're getting on and what the future is like for those young players. There's a, there's a load of football talent coming through, really, really good footballers. A lot of work being done at club level, a lot of work being done in the development squads and the, the future is definitely bright for Cork football. And it's our job to help them to come through to represent us at a senior level. Well, preparations are non-existent at the moment uh, because uh, of lockdown. So we're hoping to hear fairly shortly that the game is going ahead. Uh, Things were going well, we were looking forward to, to it, but obviously with lockdown it has changed the, the situation. But any day we play Kerry as a Cork person is always a good day. Well, every time you go to play football, you go to win a game. And you go to, to, to perform at the highest level that you possibly can. So irrespective of who you're playing, you've got to, you've got to win that game. That's what you're going out for. So perform to be the best that you can be. What I found in the squad is, as a group, they're mad to improve as athletes, mad to improve as hurlers, and mad to improve as people. And for me, that's fantastic to be uh, amongst a, a group like that. And our job as managers and as a management team is to build an environment that enables that. Really looking forward to the Limerick game with a good solid display against Clare and I'd say the mood is like us all, can't wait to get out there and get at it. Thanks to Don Logue and to Bobby and the best of luck to the miners in those upcoming games. Now remember, One Cork's programme of investment and commercial activity is expected to realise over 20 million euro in revenue over the next five years and that income through commercial revenue, advertising, sponsorship, stadium rental, concerts, it will be used to invest heavily in clubs across Cork and in a better resourced county structure. That way everybody wins. Let's go back to Kevin O'Donovan for the closing words on how you can be part of what's next for Cork GAA. The Cork GAA family must be all things to all of its people. This family includes people of all ages, male and female. Some have played, others have not. Some have climbed the steps of the Hogan stand, others have not. And yet we share the same dream, the same united vision. A vision of seeing our games played on local fields long after we've passed. A vision of every boy and girl across the county being given an opportunity to express themselves through our games. A vision of seeing them wearing club or county colours as they run across the hallowed turf at our home here in Parky Keefe. One vision, one home, one Cork. One Cork is built upon key values, values that have driven the clubs of this county for long over a century. Community, volunteerism, inclusion, fairness, loyalty, participation, performance, excellence. To ensure that these values continue to be upheld, an inclusive, resilient and versatile strategy is now required. This strategy must incorporate the provision of a regular and meaningful programme of games for all our players with a corresponding top-class coaching programme for both football and hurling in our 260 clubs or 450 schools and our many county teams. This strategy must ensure fairness in the allocation of resources and recognise the relationships necessary to bind it, with the end goals of maximum participation and optimum performance. Key supports will provide the organisational foundation so that this strategy will be realisable as part of a stable and sustainable operation. Such essential supports 
will include coaching strategies, training and match day facility provision, fundraising and support, strategic investment, appropriate governance, financial planning and control, fixture programming, commercial activation, communications, IT and so much more. Ultimately, however, such structures must be filled by people, and those people include you. Seamus Heaney once wrote, even if the hopes you started out with are dashed, hope has to be maintained. Yes, it is acknowledged that we now face challenging times here in Cork, from a lack of success on the field to financial challenges off it. Yes, it is acknowledged that we have had division in the past, but now it's time to maintain hope. Cork GA must continue to chart new horizons in order to thrive, and we must embark on this journey with unity as One Cork. The formation of the One Cork Group now amalgamates the existing organisations working to further Gaelic games across the county, including the Cork County Board, the Parky Key Stadium Board, Cork to Cork Key Supporters Club, the clubs, the army of dedicated supporters of Cork GA. No doubt, a growing partnership with our Camogie and ladies football counterparts will soon follow. The group's ambition is to deliver a unified strategy so that all facets of Cork GA are fully resourced in financial terms, with commensurate guidance and direction in regards to how these resources are appropriately allocated. It will include our clubs, our schools, our stadia and our county teams. Key areas of the focus will be ensuring of appropriate coaching structures and resources at grassroots level, delivery of best-in-class training facilities for Cork teams at all levels, ensuring of a robust, appropriate level of financial support for all Cork teams with a view to ensuring the best chance of All-Ireland success. Another objective of the group is to ensure that the requisite level of financial advisory and governance support is made available to Cork County Board so that it can position Cork GA for optimum results and success at all levels. The group will seek to support the establishment of an appropriate funding model for the operations of the County Board and for Parky Keefe. In the short term, the group will support the delivery of a business plan to address revenue, costs and the liability obligation of Parky Keefe. This is with a view to reach a stable financial position for Cork GA, whilst ensuring that the needs of teams are not compromised. 2020 saw the initiation of a joint GA and stadium business plan, with 12 work groups formed to investigate potential sources of revenue. Several potential sources were identified across both Cork GA and Park O'Keefe, culminating in four commercial revenue streams, namely corporate, supporters, campus and community. Revenue from these streams will be used to drive our games at club, school and county level, as well as support the board's finances and to fund the stadium debt. Green shoots have already emerged from this process. The Examiner Media Partnership, the Bon Secours and Dairy Gold County Championships and various stadium sponsorships arrangements now in place. A number of other commercial partnerships are also in the pipeline and close to confirmation in the new year. Meanwhile, with the success of the new county championships this year, it is hoping that our gates will exceed their previous heights, while the launch of Rebels Bounty is an opportunity for our clubs to raise unlimited funds for their local units. And of course, our pitch at Parky Keefe has finally answered all the hard questions. Ultimately, the Cork GA supporters already signed up to One Cork are surely a testament to its future success. Successful business leaders like Michael O'Flynn, John Mullins, Jim Wolfe and Kieran Callanan. Passionate supporters such as Ted Owens, Tomás Mulcahy, Conor McCarthy and Sean O'Brien. Committed county board officers and staff such as Tracy Kennedy, Mark Sheehan, Dear McGowan and Sinead O'Keefe and of course the county executive. And of course many more such people from the various groups with various reputations talent and ideas that have already joined work groups within the structure. They have all come on board. We hope that you are next so that we all can become one Cork.